How I Became a Ghost, Chapter 9, Nita and the Ghost Walkers. Here they are, said Gabe. He plopped the blankets in front of my father. We still sat by the fire, by the morning fire. Yakoki, said my mother. Yakoki means thank you in Choctaw. She unrolled the blankets and wrapped one around me. Here's one for you too, Luke, she said, handing one to my brother, and one for your father, and one for me. We sat and looked at each other. My blanket itched, but I didn't care. I was with my family, and we were warm. For the first time since our homes were burned, we were warm. As we started the day's walk, the sun shone in the sky and uh, was clear and cloudless. The road was frozen at my feet. And my feet were cold, but the sun felt good on my face. We walked through the thick forest, and melting icicles fell all around us. A tree branch broke and fell to the ground. Nita squealed and jumped under my blanket. Can I walk with you, she asked. Her tiny voice was so soft and muffled by the thick blanket. Yes, little Nita, you can walk with me, I said, giving her a big smile. I never had a big brother, she said. Will you be my big brother? Of course, I said. I'd be happy to be your big brother. The night, the camp, or that night at the campfire, Nita st- suddenly stood. She walked close to the fire and turned to look at us. What are you doing? Her mother asked. I have to say, or I have something to say to everybody, Nita said. What is it? Her mother asked. I have a big brother. Isaac is my new big brother. I hung my head and hoped no one would make fun of me. I thought this big brother thing would be a secret. It didn't look, or I didn't look at Luke. If anybody laughed at me, it would be him. I was wrong. Isaac will be a good big brother for you, Nita, Luke said. I like being his big brother. He will like being yours. I looked up and Luke was smiling at me. Yakoki, yeah, I said softly. I looked around the circle and everyone was staring at me, waiting for me to do something. This was a special time, but I didn't know what to do. I finally stood and walked over by Nita. I am proud to be your big brother, Nita, I said. I will take care of you. Everyone nodded and smiled, and Ruth started singing the Choctaw Friendship Song. We all joined in, and for the first time, our two families felt like one. I hoped Nita, or I hoped I could keep my promise, my promise to t- uh, keep, take care of Nita. Later that night, just before I fell asleep, I had a funny thought. If I am a ghost, how can I take care of Nita? I asked myself. By morning, I knew what to do. I could take care of Nita as best I could while I was still alive. I ate my breakfast in a hurry, and while everyone else was eating, I found a sharp stone. I cut two small pieces from my blanket. Nita, let me see your feet, I said. Nita lay back on her mother's lap and lifted her feet high. I tied the blanket uh, pieces on her feet. Now, I said, your feet will be warm when you walk. No more walking on icy roads, not for my little sister. I was glad Nita now had warm blanket shoes. That afternoon, the wind blew hard and the sky was covered with mean, uh, icy clouds. We should find a tree to sleep under tonight, Gabe said. I think the weather is, or I think bad weather is coming. We built our campfire under an old oak tree with thick branches. Gabe was right. The next morning, uh, a hard rain fell. A clap of thunder woke me up, but my blanket was already soaking wet. I stood under the tree and shivered. I tried to shake the water from my blanket. A soldier rode rode his horse into our camp. No time to build a fire, he said. Breakfast will have to wait. We need to move. Start walking. If the rain stops you, you can build... Uh, You can build the cooking fires. Careful, my father shouted. The roads will be slippery. I could barely hear his voice above the pounding rain. Soon the rain turned to ice, and by late morning, the world was covered with ice. We walked without stopping all day with nothing to eat. An hour before sunset, the sleet stopped. The woods were thick on both sides of the road. Long icicles hung from every tree branch. The soldier rode up and down the line of Choctaw walkers, shouting, Let's make camp here. We found a small clearing in the clump of trees and started building our, our evening fire. By now, we were <clears throat> like one big family. Gabe, Ruth, and Nita were more than friends. They were family. We shared the work, and then we shared the food. A soldier dropped off a bag of corn we used for our supper. Milk will be here soon, he said. In a few minutes, another soldier brought a jug of milk. Thank you, Gabe said. Where did you get milk? We bought it from a nearby farmer, said the soldier. I hope that farmer has a lot of cows, Gabe said. After the soldier left, the soldiers left. We need to milk, or we need milk for a thousand Choctaws. We had Choctaw corn soup for supper that night. Pashufa, we call it. Soft corn in milk chowder. Yum. The next morning, I remembered what Gabe had said. A thousand Choctaws. As we started to walk, I felt a warm shiver. I was afraid to open my eyes. My two families surrounded me, and I didn't want, 
or, and I didn't want to see anybody die. I do not want to know, I whispered to myself, and then I felt a warm hand on my cheek. It is me, Isaac. It was Mr. Jonah's voice. I opened my eyes. I was scared, I told him. Sometimes I know too much. I understand, said Mr. Jonah. I want this to be easy for you. How can dying be easy, I asked. I cannot give you a good answer, he said, but there is something you should see. Go ahead, look around. I pulled back my blanket and stretched my neck high as far as I could see. Choctaws were beginning their walk for the day. I see this every day, I said. Mr. Jonah laughed. You're not looking close enough. I squinted my eyes. The shiver was so warm, I felt as if I were sitting close to the fire. I saw the Choctaw walkers like before, but now I saw hundreds more Choctaws, Choctaw ghost walkers. Where did these people come from? I asked. They came from all over Choctaw country, he said. They died from the fires. They died from the sickness, and they died from hunger. But they will never leave. They are like you? I asked him. Yes, son, they are like me. We are here to help you. Our lives are over, but we can still help the living. Can I ever call for you for help? I asked. Isaac will be there when, when you need me. Um, as a soft or as a soft and quiet moon was rising, Mrs. Jonah appeared at his side. I am here for you too, she said. Now, Mr. Jonah, we should be going. Or said Mr. Jonah, we should be going. Today will be hard for you. Know that we are here. I closed my eyes and they were gone. Isaac, my father shouted, catch up. This day was the coldest day of our walk, colder than our days in the swamp. Freezing rain fell all uh, all day long, and I could not forget what Mr. Jonah had said. Today will be hard for you. I wondered what he meant. I soon had my answer.